Marcellus Gallery at the King's Art Center. I'm pleased to be welcoming you to the Fresno Printmakers Guild opening reception. We're virtual this evening, but I'm walking through the gallery so you can get an overview of the vivid and wide array of art that we're able to display because of these talented printmakers. What is printmaking? It's an exciting media where you can use lots of techniques to arrive at a wide variety of color, composition, and subject material. As you can see as we walk through, you're seeing a tremendous amount of evocative art, and we want you to be a big part of this exhibit. Let me introduce you to Jared Barbick and Matt Hopkins. Hobson, what's the last one? You have Walker. Yeah. Hobson Walker, Matt Hobson Walker. Thanks gentlemen for being with us this evening. Tell us about printmaking and how it comes together and what brings artists to it. Well, uh, printmaking, the term is sort of an umbrella term to capture four different uh, sort of ideologies of image making. You know, the first is relief, um, where you have a surface that you carve and the raised areas are printed. The second is intaglio, um, which includes etching and dry point, where you have marks that are scribed or pushed into a plate and ink is wiped into those and then polished off the raised surfaces and printed. So that includes engraving, which is how money is printed um, currently. The third is screen printing, which is a stencil-based printing technique, which goes back to um, ancient China, China, where they would use horse hair or human hair to actually tie stencils together to print decorative um, elements onto silk and other fibers. Fourth is lithography, which is strangely the most Current, you know, newest technique, but is is uh, now used in a more mechanized way. But that's the basic principle that oil and water don't mix. So you have um, surfaces that are drawn on with grease. Um, generally, traditionally, it would be limestone. So we're talking about art made on surfaces that are compacted pterodactyls. <laughs> yeah. So it's from the same sort of you know um, age or, or um, layer as marble is, and some people will actually use marble for it as well. So, I mean, those are kind of uh, the t technical, like, media ways, uh, or ways that media describes how it's used. But I think a lot of artists are drawn to it because each medium allows you to draw or make images in a different way. So relief prints tend to be kind of more graphic, um, but with, you know, very physical marks cut into it, very descriptive marks. Intaglio tends to look more like almost tattoo art or cartoons or comics because you can do very sort of line-based images you know built up with it um, and then screen printing also tends to be very graphic because you're talking about open areas in a screen of fiber um, that ink passes through so it's it's you know each medium kind of dictates how they look to a certain extent and lithography tends to look more like crayon drawings or pencil drawings um, because of how the grease is applied to the surface so i think a lot of artists who come to you know the fine arts as people who draw um, or you know, paint and aren't satisfied with how paint looks on canvas will often gravitate towards printmaking because it's a very drawing-based medium. Um, and yeah, so I, mean, I think that's <laughs> so. Real quickly, you know, around our gallery we have a lot of art. What kinds of uh, media are we seeing? Oh gosh, I think we have all media represented here, which is I think a, a, an exciting part about this exhibition for us when we put it together, um, was that a lot of the members in the guild work in very different ways. So we have, you know, relief prints, we have multicolor relief prints where there's multiple blocks that are being inked and printed one on top of the other. Um, we have intaglio represented with uh, mezzotint and also some line etched, I believe. Um, the example that Dan brought mm -hmm. is a line etching. Um, and then with lithography, we have Matthew Rangel's work, which is kind of beautifully captures different information about the area, the Central Valley and the mountain ranges around us. Um, and then screen printing, which is kind of what a lot of my work is based in, um, which is behind me over here, uh, is represented <laughs> in my work. Which, you know, kind of, you know, I, I think the most well-known screen printer would be, you know, the work made for Andy Warhol or by Andy Warhol, which okay. uh, was printed on canvas and he referred to as paintings, but they're essentially screen prints, okay. you know. Um, so it has that kind of pop, uh, pop art yeah. history as well. Hey Jared, tell us a little bit about the Fresno Printmakers Guild. What is a guild and, and why do printmakers come together in one? A uh, guild, by definition, is kind of like just a group of artisans that practice a craft. Uh, it goes back thousands of years. Uh, the Fresno Print Guild 
started, I think, in the 80s, and it was really printmakers in the Central Valley, predominantly from Fresno. They got together to practice and talk craft. Uh, today, the Printmakers Guild is comprised of people locally, regionally, and internationally. Uh, so we've really changed in how our uh, membership structure looks. It's really people that work in all different forms of printmaking, as Matt said. Uh, we get together, we try to collaborate and work together as much as we can, inspire and inform each other. And really, it gives people like myself, I'm kind of a neophyte to printmaking, where I've only been doing it for maybe three and a half to four years, to work with someone like Matt, who's been doing it much, much longer. And so you get that tutorial, that mentorship kind of uh, vibe to it. And it allows us as a guild to work with students and coach students and um, provide them with the education and support to kind of move through their own artistic career. Um, you were key in bringing together all the pieces in this exhibit. Tell us um, who are the artists, where are they from, and um, what you think is strong about the pieces that we've brought together here. Well, I've been to a, a lot of printmaking shows and to galleries uh, like the Davidson Gallery in Seattle and seen their work and a lot of the work uh, in printmaking can feel a bit um, redundant if it's all black and white or if it's all the same kind of style of printmaking. Our artists do, like Matt was saying, everything from screen printing to lithography to etching to block printing. And so there's just a, a lot of variety here, and you have black and white, you have color, you have very contemporary work. You also have works that um, are socio-political, that are environmentalist. So you see just a huge array of styles and content and subject matter. Um, our members um, really are like Roger uh, is from Los Banos in that area, he just moved up there. Victoria, who does mezzotints, is in Australia and Melbourne. Matt and myself are both in Fresno, as well as uh, Carol Zekis and uh, Carolyn Zettler are also in Fresno. We have Joseph Tepe, who does uh, a lot of socio-political works. He's down in Bakersfield, and he actually works a lot with inmates and teaches inmates, engages them in printmaking and art crafting. We have Shara Mercado who's also relatively local. I think she lives up in um, near Los Palos as well. I'm not sure, yeah. I think so. So our, our membership is really kind of stretching out and we're bringing in people statewide as well as trying to reach out and bring in people more um, from almost anywhere in the country. If they want to be part of the guild, come be part of it. It's a great <laughs> opportunity. Very cool. Let me ask something to both of you at this point. Um, Jared, you and I were chatting a little bit yesterday evening about printmaking, and I think when lots of people think of printmaking, we assume we're talking about graphic design and, and the posters that we see that are um, kind of advertising based. Um, talk a little bit about how that misconception misrepresents the artisanship that's related to printmakers. Well, I mean, the, the history of printmaking is the history of graphic design. I mean, you had images made uh, as illustrations for Bibles, uh, for public hangings, I guess was a very popular public <laughs> execution of the really popular printmaking uh, outputting early on in the, in the guild system. Um, you know, so you had an woodcut artists who came out of uh, cabinetry, um, so there wasn't a lot of craft involved until around the time that Albrecht Durer sort of early renaissance, um, where you had somebody who was an artist who was learning the craft and then using that to make images that kind of exploited the best qualities of the process. Um, but, uh, you know, as images were used to sell ideas um, with printmaking, because it was something that could be made as a multiple and disseminated, um, then you had type and text started to get included in that. And then, you know, that kind of led us to movable type. The people, uh, because printmaking is often used or commercial printing is often used for graphic design sake nowadays. Um, and that includes some of the techniques and technology that we employ as artists. Um, I think printmaking artists tend to be more focused on not just the craft aspect, but the sort of um, emotional or expressive elements that are available in each process. I think also the, the other misconception that you see is that when people hear printmaking and graphic design, they assume that I, I sit in front of a computer and I'll work out the image in Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop and I simply just print it on my inkjet printer in my house and I'll frame it and, that, and that's the representational of the, the piece of art. Uh, there's very little of that involved in 
printmaking. Printmaking uh, is more visceral, it's far more layered and complex. Um, the drawing part of it is usually done by hand on either paper or some other medium and then transferred over to either a stone or a plate or a piece of wood. Um, and then you either, you have to get real tools and, and cut things out and you got to make it happen and you got to bring it to life and then you would transfer it to paper using ink in some way. Um, even if it's a screen, it's, it, you still have to go through a series of processes to transfer the image to the screen to make it so that the ink can go through certain holes and transfer it to the paper. So it's really not as simple as uh, just rendering an image on a computer and printing it like in, in my living room or in my office. And I think that's probably the biggest misconception yeah. generally is that people think printmaking is that. Yeah. Um, and so. Well, and I think Andy Warhol is a great anchor point for us to discuss in terms of fine art um, because it's someone who's accessible to all of us and who we understand as a fine artist. And we hear screen printing and we think t shirts, you yeah. know, right? right. <clears throat> when we don't think of the multi layered, deep, meaningful, creative, expressive works that we're seeing on our walls in here. So thanks for sharing today those kinds of things. We encourage you to come join us here at the Marcellus Gallery. While we weren't able to be together live and in person tonight for our opening reception, the gallery doors will be open during our regular time. We'll be social distancing and safely wearing masks for you to come and visit our gallery at a 25% capacity, which is pretty easy for us to manage here. So please come down and see this exhibit. We are really pleased not only to be presenting the art here in our gallery, we also have um, examples of the media that's used to create this art that you can read about and discover more about printmaking. So Matt and Jared, thanks for being with us this evening for opening reception. Um, welcome everyone to the King's Art Center and the Fresno Printmakers Guild exhibit in the Marcellus Gallery.